I'm here just to experience the whole thing, the, see the pomp and the circumstance, and you know, just to be here and get the feeling of the crowd and the excitement. I just, I love it. o'clock, the first of the 1900 guests have begun to arrive. With roads around the whole area sealed off, they've been asked to allow plenty of time to get to the Abbey. And this was certainly an occasion that no one wanted to miss. 50 members of the British royal family, 40 foreign royals, 60 governors general and prime ministers from around the world, and some 200 diplomats and government officials. After a few last words of advice from the Dean, William and Harry began the long walk up the aisle, nodding greetings to the assembled guests as they went. At their side was a man they've known for many years. Sir Stephen Lamport, now the Receiver General at the Abbey, was private secretary to Prince Charles during the difficult years of Diana's death and beyond. A familiar face to help put William at ease. Rolls, a 1950 model which was presented to the Queen when she was Princess Elizabeth, made its way through the arch and into the tilt yard. The state trumpeter marked the departure of the Queen and Duke from Buckingham Palace. The huge crowds must have reminded them of the scenes at the Golden Jubilee celebrations nine years earlier, when a million people thronged around the palace to mark the 50th anniversary of the Queen's reign. Today, though, they were proud grandparents above all else and happy to let William and Catherine take centre stage. Fanfare from the state trumpeters of the Household Cavalry marked the Queen's arrival at the Abbey. The crowds went wild. They loved what they could see but we would all have to wait for the full impact of the dress until the bridal car reached Westminster. And what a journey this must have been for a young woman from a small village in Berkshire. Born a commoner, Catherine Middleton was now on her way to become a princess, a duchess, and one day, queen. As the cheers and screams sounded around her and a forest of flags were waved, she seemed for all the world born to this role. Calm, composed and gloriously happy.
At a few seconds past 11 o'clock, the car drew up outside the abbey. Catherine's bouquet was designed to complement her gown, and it was full of meaning. The lily of the valley signify happiness. The sweet William, not only her husband-to-be, but gallantry. Hyacinth represent constancy in love, and ivy, fidelity. There was also a traditional stem of myrtle, the emblem of marriage, from a plant grown by Queen Victoria, and a sprig from the myrtle plant used in the Queen's wedding bouquet in 1947. Time then for Prince William and his best man to take their places. They'd been waiting in a small private area behind the high altar. Michael Middleton, this was a time of great pride and great emotion. He looked overwhelmed at moments, and it seemed that Catherine was the stronger and more confident of the two. As the bride and her father approached the altar, Prince Harry couldn't help taking a sneaky look at the bride. And he liked what he saw, whispering to his brother, well, she looks beautiful, I can tell you that. At last, a chance for William to see his bride and appreciate just how stunning she looked. Incredible, he said. You look beautiful. And a light-hearted word for his soon-to-be father-in-law along the lines of, it was meant to be a small family affair. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here in the sight of God and in the face of this congregation to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony. I, William Arthur Philip Louis. I, William Arthur Philip Louis. Take thee, Catherine Elizabeth. Take thee, Catherine Elizabeth. To my wedded wife. To my wedded wife. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death us do part. Till death us do part. According to God's holy law. According to God's holy law. And thereto I give thee my troth. And thereto I give thee my troth.
I, Catherine Elizabeth. I, Catherine Elizabeth. Take thee, William Arthur Philip Louis. Take thee, William Arthur Philip Louis. To my wedded husband. To my wedded husband. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death us do part. Till death us do part. According to God's holy law. According to God's holy law. And thereto I give thee my truth. And thereto I give thee my truth. With this ring I thee wed. With this ring I thee wed. With my body I thee honour. With my body I thee honour. And all my worldly goods with thee I share. And all my worldly goods with thee I share. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Ghost. And of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. The anthem by John Rutter, specially composed for the day. Marriage is intended to be a way in which man and woman help each other to become what God meant each one to be, their deepest and their truest selves. Many people are fearful at the prospects for our world, but the message of the celebrations in this country and far beyond its shores is the right one. This is a joyful day. It is good that people in every continent are able to share in these celebrations, because this is, as every wedding day should be, a day of hope. In a sense, every wedding is a royal wedding, with the bride and the groom as king and queen of creation, making a new life together so that life can flow through them into the future. Trumpeters from the central band of the RAF sounded an accolade to the newlyweds. Specially composed for the day, it was called Valiant and Brave, the motto of the Prince's RAF squadron in North Wales. Catherine, now Her Royal Highness the Duchess of Cambridge, curtsied low to her grandmother-in-law, the Queen, who welcomed her into the family with a warm smile. Smiles of encouragement, too, from Prince Charles, who had worked closely with Catherine on choosing the music for the ceremony. The country and the worldwide audience shared in a very special family moment.
the new Duchess needed a reality check to confirm that life had now changed forever, perhaps the site of the 1902 State Landor, built for King Edward VII, provided it. With impeccable timing, a signal was given and the carriage moved off to loud applause and great waves of cheering. At the Abbey, the Queen seemed animated as she chatted with Carol Middleton and the Duchess of Cornwall. There were Londoners, away-day travellers and overseas visitors. 